Hard heavy and hair. Badass music. For badass listeners. With Pariah Burke. The pandemic hit the music industry hard. Few were hit as hard as Norwegian glam metal band Wigwam. At the end of 2021, the band couldn't get a booking. And despite a new record from Frontiers Music SRL, they were about to call it quits for the second time in their 20-year career. Then came Peacemaker. An offbeat superhero TV show from the mind of James Gunn saved Wigwam by setting the show's stunning opening sequence dance number to their 2010 song, Do You Want to Taste It? Overnight, Wigwam was not only saved, but became one of the hottest bands on earth. A year later, they have another new album and a year-long tour lined up, including a slot on the Monsters of Rock cruise. The attitude of frontman against Sten Nilsson couldn't be more positive, as you'll see when I sit down with Aga on the day their new album takes Wigwam out of the dark. Hello. Hi there. Here we are. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm Pariah. <laughs> it's been been a been a hectic day. <laughs> I bet. Album release day. But you're Pariah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the Pariah Rock. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where are you seated? Uh, in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Hello, Oregon. Sarpsborg, Norway. Here. Ah. Right now. But my my parents' house. I moved up uh, far up north, so I'm down here at my parents' place when we rehearse and do all the <laughs> the business shit. <laughs> Is that your old room? That's my old room. Right they on. Ke- even kept some of some of my old posters up here. <laughs> right on. One of the first the first wigwam posters up there. My father's kept here, <laughs> almost like a museum. <laughs> they must be very proud of you. Well, they are, but they, they, I think they would wish I had uh, been into more, you know, quiet music. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're not into hard rock, tell you that. But they've, they've seen, they've seen Wigwam a couple of times. Yeah. I think it's fun. Oh, right they on. prefer going to the Queen shows that I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other types of music do you play? All kinds of music. Uh, I am. Um, you know, uh, ever since we got started with Wigwam, you know, um, I've been doing uh, solo albums, and I, I never, kind of, I never kind of uh, wanted to to uh, release music that were like Wigwam music when I did solo because you know I had the best band in the world, so why would I? Why would I do hard rock when I have this great horror band, you know? So I would rather do things that I couldn't do with Wigwam to to pursue, you know, uh, persuade other to do other music musical, you know, adventures. So uh, so I've done like singer songwriter stuff, you know, more more mellow stuff, more melancholic stuff. I mean to to. Uh, to be able to uh, get that out of my system. Right now I'm working for this company, this publishing company in, in Norway called Arctic Rights, where I write, write music for, for other artists where I can actually uh, do that. And I keep my hard rock music for for my band, Willigwam, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So you're, so you you own the rights, the copyright to all the music and everything. Not with Wigwam. We are t- three songwriters in Wigwam, but you know, uh, for all the well, other. I meant art, the band uh, itself, artists. rather than a, a label or anything. Huh? I I meant you guys in the band. You you own. All yeah, the we write all our music ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, so before we get too far, please allow me to congratulate you. The album dropped today. Out of the dark came out of the dark today. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. I've had one one hell of a release party here with my old folks. We've been having cake and coffee, and <laughs> <laughs> I played them some tunes, you know. But <laughs> well, uh, 
on the stereo here. So I thought it was a bit too heavy, but they, they kind of enjoyed it. Very cool. Um, so I assume you're going to take the album on tour. Yep. Now we're going on tour in uh, two weeks' time. Um, club tour here in Norway first, and then we're coming over to the U.S. And finally, we have we have all our legal, legal shit coming together. And, uh, you know, we were supposed to be in the U.S. in January, but now uh, it's been postponed because there's such a such a line there in, the, you know, the, um, with the working visas and everything. So they uh, couldn't get it ready for us. So finally it's working out and uh, we're coming over in April. Our first tour in the U.S. Wow, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, yeah. Really looking forward to it. Right on. I'm looking forward to seeing you here in America. Hopefully we'll come to Oregon. I just heard we're coming to, uh, you know, we were doing some uh, so some shows down in uh, in California and we're, we're doing uh, Virginia and, uh, of course, we're doing the Monsters of Rock cruise. Are you going there? Not this year, but, uh, okay. yeah, I was going to ask you if you're going on the cruise. <laughs> huh? Sorry, what was that? No, your loss. <laughs> you should have been there this year, you know. Absolutely, yeah, definitely my loss. Um, I just heard that we were coming to to uh, we were booked in Detroit. I just saw the papers today, so that's also going to be interesting. Never been there before. Are you going to be do? Will you be attending the Nam show in April by any chance? When is that? Uh, I think it's April seventh or seventeenth. I'd have to check the dates. Let me see. I hope it's the seventeenth because that would be awesome. You know, oh, the, um, I'm... so it's the thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. There we are. Wow, we're coming over just in just about that time. Actually, I think we're coming over the twelfth or something. Yeah, that oh, would right. be something. Yeah, my my guitar player in ammunition, John. He he's been he's been uh, been there for like ten years, I think. Uh, presenting on a guest guitar that we have here in Norway. So, uh, and he's been trying to get me over there for several times, but you know, I've always been touring and busy, so never had time. But maybe this time, that would be cool. Well, if you're there, I'll be at NAM. Um, maybe we can connect. I can buy you a beer or a coffee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll have I'll have Gary send you my uh my cell phone number. Yeah, please do, please do. How about that beer? All right, <laughs> a big one, a big one. <laughs> how is the how how's the beer in Norway? Uh, is it? We have a lot of beers in Norway, and uh, of course, there's a lot of micro breweries. You know, it's been very popular now. So, very very much local beer around. You know, so, so it's it's getting better and better. You know, I'm not the kind of beer type, but you know, you know, uh, I prefer prefer um, uh, red wine, <laughs> and sometimes you know the stronger, the stronger ones. You know, the, the especially the the Moscow Moscow Mule. I don't call it Moscow Mule anymore. I call it a Kia Mule uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> it tastes yep. much better than. <laughs> um, I'm a whiskey man myself, but uh, yeah, I, I like do a whiskey good too. Cocktail. I like to smoke your whiskeys. It needs to be oh, yeah. smoked. Yeah. It needs to feel, it, it needs to taste like you're almost in the campfire, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the best one. Lagavulin. Have you had that one from, from Scotland, I believe? Which one? When is you smell it? it, it's like Lagavulin. No. Very I smoky one. It's the smokiest whiskey I've ever had. It's like Ah, you can you you can really you you can really smell the campfire. I tell you that. If you have one out. sip and you come to your wife or your girlfriend, let's say you know, oh, you've been out campfire, <laughs> you know the barbecue. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll check that one out. Check that Lagavulin, recommended. All right. Um, maybe we we'll, maybe uh at maybe if you go to Nam, we can go grab uh you know some smoky whiskeys. Yeah, yeah, I mean for that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk about the recent history of Wigwam. Yep. Take let's step back a little bit, rewind the clock a little. Fall of 2021. 
was not a great time for your band. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> what was going yeah, on? Yeah, it was, but it, it was, but it wasn't, you know, um, because we were, you know, uh, on the cre creative side, we had a, a, a great period of time there where we actually connected again. So, so, uh, if you're talking about being creative and being being among among friends and reconnecting again, that was a great time. But you know, uh, for for playing live gigs, not that much. We had a really hard time getting out there, you know. And uh, luckily enough, we in Norway we were lucky to have uh, we were ab able to to play live gigs that that were were sponsored by the the cultural department of Norway you had to apply for that and they would pay for a whole crew and everything even though we could only have 100 people inside you know so we would play gigs in front of 100 persons in places that would take thousands you know and uh, and we would do a big stage show and everything everything was paid for and um and that was kind of our our first gigs and uh, we were able to to really connect again, you know, on stage as well, because, uh, you know, face it, uh, back in 2013, when we did our last show here in Norway, uh, we hadn't been doing, you know, wigwam at all, you know, and uh, that was, for me, that was history. So, um, so kind of finding, finding back to, to the magic on stage, you know, it takes time. It's, even though it's your second skin, it feels like, kind of you know a lot of things happened between 2013 and 2021 i'll tell you that uh, i imagine it takes a little while to get that that groove back after so long being apart getting the timing down with you know the guitar player and the bass player and then everybody gelling with the drummer yeah, yeah. but but the good thing is that burnt our bass player and trump They've been playing together ever since. They 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 formed a new band and they played with Yorn, so they've been pretty much uh, uh, together. Uh, I play with other other guys, you know, like Eric Martinson and and the guys in in Nordic Beast and Ammunition, you know, and and my other bands. Um, the drummer on the other side, he he had been doing much, so he really needed to practice a lot because he had been playing in other bands you know after we fell apart um but for those for those shows he actually he couldn't he couldn't make it because he had an operation in his knee so we had to bring in uh you know a hired gun and that hired gun was someone that had been playing with with burnt and and tron before in the the dracula show so uh it sounded tight and it was great and then after a while we brought in uh Oystein and uh and uh, we had to practice a lot because you know that takes time to to, to find a groove and, and now we're back on track and we're ready to go that's that's fantastic um uh, i'm loving the new album so i've been listening Thanks. to it for a while you know uh frontier sent it to me to listen to long before the release date and i've just been loving every song on it cool because you know it's, it's hard when you're so you know close to it and you know it's uh for me now listening to 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 uh never say die i have I have forgotten you know all the all the things that i thought about it when it was fresh because then it was you know you, you tend to to remember all the parts that you were struggling with and it, that you weren't kind of satisfied with, you know, when you listen to back to it now, I, I have forgotten all about that. So now I will hear with, you know, <laughs> your ears and with out, out of the dark. Uh, now I hear with, with my ears still. So, uh, but after maybe a year or two, you know, I will listen to it with your ears. And, uh, right now it's like, ah, oh, I should have done that. I should have done that. You know, <laughs> I yeah. should <laughs> different parts that you, you still struggle with and you know because you you really remember now you know the the different suggestions and you know where to go should we bring in that part instead of that part you know it's still <laughs> it's so fresh so and um 
So that's I I don't tend to listen to. I mean, you you listen to when you make a, an album, you know, you listen to those, those songs over and over and over again when you write them and you arrange them and you you record them, you know, and final mixes and stuff and to put together the track list and everything and then you kind of just bury it and then after a while you will take it take it up again every time i listen to it now it's still too fresh for me to even you know to mean anything about it so it's uh it's kind of scary to bring it out there because you know you, you don't even know what you think about it yourself still because it's so fresh and you just you know but um uh, it's good to hear that you like and we were receiving great response from uh, from, uh, from our fans and from from um, people that review it. So it's, that's awesome. That's great. I'm glad I'm glad to hear that you're getting a lot of positive response to it. It's yeah, a we do, we do. Some, you know, some some um, some might miss, you know, the old old wigwam style where it was more kind of you know uh, more tongue in cheek, everything, and you know in we were like a kind of a parody band, especially on Six Six Seven, the neighbor of the beast, the first album that became hard to be a rock and roller after a while. And uh, but now when we when we got together, we we sat down and talked about what what is Wigwam gonna be in you know the modern days. You know, are we gonna still do do that style, or how are we gonna? What's our new take on this band? And what we decided was, you know, a good song is a good song. And let's just forget about the image. Let's forget about what think what people think we are and what we were and everything in the history. Let's just make music that comes naturally. And so that's what we did. We just um, sat down, wrote songs, and uh, felt the passion again for it. So I think we have a renewed passion for 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 our music and uh and a new 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 gain respect for each other as as both friends but also as colleagues and and, and songwriters so uh just the other day we were actually having a conversation you know the all the four of us we were we were rehearsing for for the tour and uh I mean, it's, it's it's good to to communicate again uh, the way way a band should communicate because you know, especially when you don't, you know, we're, we're not in our our teens anymore. So <laughs> when you're grown up, you know, you you don't hang around, you don't hang with people anymore like you used to. You know, it's not like we 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 hang every day, and you know, so yeah. there's a lot of lot of time apart from each other. Uh, and so it's even even more necessary to have those talks and to just to connect, even though it's sometimes only on Zoom, you know, just to be able to connect and to know how how your your friends are, and you know, yeah, definitely be like united, like a you know. So if you're, how will the tour be? I mean, if you, if you don't spend a lot of time together and then suddenly you're all together every day, every <laughs> night on tour, how's that going to go? Well, <laughs> that was what, what went wrong the last time because we spent too much time together. I mean, we <laughs> we were kind of, you know, even, you know, in the first tours, you know, we had to share rooms and stuff. And that's crazy. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> when we come to places now, there's been a couple of occasions now. We, uh, no, we, we don't do sharing rooms. <laughs> no, separate rooms, please. I mean, <laughs> somebody has to draw the line. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't think that's going to be a problem because we have a much better, you know, uh, you know, the communication is much better now. We feel much closer, and we are, you know, of course, older and we, we, and hopefully a bit wiser and. And we don't, uh, you know, we don't party like we used to do, you know. The thing with band, you know, when you tour a lot, you know, uh, you will have you will have different agendas, you know. And uh, but now, you know, I, I, it feels like we're all in it for the the, the right reasons, and uh, that's sort what of counts. That that is really nice to hear. Uh, yeah, that's really good. So. Um, 
you were saying that you've changed musical directions a little bit, and I'm hearing that on Out of the Dark. Uh, Forevermore, for example, is a lot more Viking metal than Wigwam yeah. Engine does. <laughs> Motherwar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly it. Um, so, what was that? What was the genesis for that? What what made you want to go in that direction for that song? Oh, that was the choice, man. Um, that was the song that uh, that Tron brought to the table. And to tell you the truth, I was a bit like skeptical about that song because I thought it, it didn't have any wigwam DNA in it. I, it felt more like a song that Eric Mortensen could have written for Nordic Union or something. But at the same time, I, I when I hear a good song, I hear a good song. It's a great song. I really love the song, but is it really, really suitable for for wigwam? Uh, you know, and but, but at the same time, when you when you make make an album, you know, it's for me an album is a journey. I mean, you don't want to go to the same town every day. You need to take you know to take a hike somewhere else, and sometimes you end up in uh, Valhalla, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's a great place to be. But it's o- also good to to leave it and to to see something else. So that's kind of um kind of um, an experience and and let's face it i also have a song on this album that doesn't really have the the the, the old-fashioned wigwam dna in it like saber and the desert sun those two yep. songs kind of connect because they're kind of even though sailor isn't that celtic it still had have, have that you know that that wooden feeling you know it's like going back to the woods and uh, you know smelling the viking helmets again <laughs> so uh, those two c- kind of connect and uh, of course we have other songs uh, that you know will pull you back into to the the wigwam city yeah uh, on on sailor in the desert sun i love the rattle in that by the way that's just <laughs> yeah. really cool that's just really cool in that track Thanks. so I, this may be too soon to ask because you were saying that, you know, you're, you, you listened to out of the dark and you hear what you could have done. But do you <laughs> yeah. have, do you have a favorite song on the album or do I need to ask that six months from now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, th- there's one song, um, you know, that I sometimes can, sometimes can, uh, find myself just listening to in the car just just oh, i need to hear that song again and that's uh that's uh uh uppercut just i really love that riff man I, I love the production on it and i is blasting out on full speakers in the cars like I get that that same adrenaline rush the, the first time i heard that riff and i brought it to my studio did the lyrics and the 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 the, the, the melody for that i mean I just fell in love with that riff and the whole feeling of that song. There's something, something about it that, you know, it feels like kind of Dawkins-ish uh, guitars, you know. But at the same time, because he plays so melodic and uh, and it it everything just came together on that song. It's so heavy and so cool. I'm really trying to convince the guys that will, at, at some some point in the tour we're going to open with that song that would be the killer opening for 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 uh, for a show i think uh straight in your face and uh, we even have a great intro for it that we were supposed to use for the album that never made it because we we wanted we wanted to open with um uh, uh out of the dark but um probably saving that intro for for the shows it's like Almost like uh, you know a symphonic version of of the song. So cool! It's, could have been a symphonic uh, orchestra thing, you know. That that would be cool. That uh, would be it's, very it's cool. Damn cool. <laughs> it's damn cool. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just kind of imagining it. I'd love to actually hear you play that. It's like dun 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 dun. dun yeah yeah big orchestra and silhouette and boom yeah yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 all right and you know it's a song about you know even though it's about being the underdog you know fighting back uh, in a surprisingly 
good way. It's it's a uh, it's a song about war also, you know, and um, that that that's how how the lyrics for me got started in the first place because I've been watching CNN and and watching you know the the Ukrainians really fight back, and uh, and I had that I was kind of a bit furious maybe and at the same time cheering them and uh, on and and uh, and I had this uh, this song in my mind I was just going down in the studio and we just fell into place. It was like, wow, <laughs> it's like a, like a battle song. You know? So would you say that Uppercut Shazam is dedicated to Ukraine? Yeah, more or less, even though it's kind of un universal as well. It's like, it's actually kind of, uh, you know, um, the lyrics are kind of sad, really, because it, it's, it takes the notion that Good will never win. I mean, there's so so much bad stuff going on in the world, and it seems like like all the bad people in the world are fucking winning all the time. It's, so it's more like uh, you know, uh, more like a, a a prayer for the good to to to, to prevail. You know. Yeah, and and. And we need things like music. We need art to help us see that hope when there's a darkness, yeah. you know, when, when, like you said, the bad people are winning, we need art, we need music to help Definitely. us get beyond that. Get to, so we're not mired down in the muck, you know, in hopelessness. Absolutely. And that's why I think Wigwam in 2023, we have a mission. We have a mission to go out there and entertain even though some 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 of the lyrics are actually written by a guy who's been watching too much CNN, has been has <laughs> been kind of you know uh, uh, affected by you know a period in the history where we, we had lockdowns and there's been too many crazy people uh, having their say in this world, uh, too too much craziness going on and thinking about the you know. Uh, the, the the Capitol Hill uh, stuff that happened, you know, and and the war in Ukraine and everything, you know, might be a civil war in the U.S. soon. <laughs> you never know. People are sh shooting each other, and they're you know the 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 school shootings and everything that's going on in this world. It's it's crazy, and it's uh, and and uh, and I think I think uh, people are getting you know. Uh, I don't afraid. I mean, we, 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 I'm more afraid now than I've never been ever been because there's so much tension in the world between the 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 the, the powers, you know, in the world, the nuclear powers. You have China sending balloons, you know, and uh, spying on U.S. and you you never know what's going to happen next. And who knows? One day you might wake up and uh, and somebody has pushed that button, and and so. I'm all in for, you know, living life to the max today because this is the only, only thing that we truly know here and now. This maybe be has become more and more important to me because here and now we're still alive and we still live in a world that is still kind of functioning. And But you never know about tomorrow. You don't know what you're going to wake up to. Yeah, tomorrow isn't promised. It's not. So uh, let's hope we're coming over to the U.S. to play a tour, and <laughs> and uh, if we do, if uh, if the life is uh, the the world is still you know <laughs> working like it does today, uh, let's just have fun and celebrate life itself, and celebrate freedom and celebrate you know the the moment. Yeah. Yeah, live life. Don't don't just survive, live it. You know that that, that a lot of songs, a lot of songs on the album really reflects on that. Like Ghost in You, for example. I mean, uh, if you have friends that you, don't do you any good, get rid of them. I mean, you don't need. There's so much negativity in the world. You don't need. You you don't need. Um, uh, you know, energy vampires in your life. You don't need people to bring you down. You need positive people. And if if you have people in your life, even even if they're family, I mean, 
cut them loose. You don't need them. You don't need other people to drag you down. So that's my, that's something that I've been more and more, you know, uh, that care more and more about. I mean, the, the, taking care of, taking care of the moment now, you know, taking care of myself and staying yeah. sane, <laughs> you know, in a world that's going completely crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I've had to cut some people out of my life that were just, constant negative you know yep. constantly negative or or draining you know um i've even uh, you know unlike you i've stopped watching the news for the most part because it's yeah. just always bringing you down you know they'll do they'll do a yep. five minute positive story and then they'll spend the rest of the you know the the hour-long show on negative things you yep. know fear-mongering and and all that and it's just i gotta step away from it i can't I too much. I mean, I mean, I'm not watching it. There was a there was a period I, I had to stop watching the series that I used to watch, like uh, like uh, Walking Dead and other other ones that was too dark. And I mean, let's bring in some light. Let's let's have a good time. So um, yeah, if we need a dance number on the Walking Dead. We you know just a bunch of zombies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Should have had that. And that's that's why I think you know probably Peacemaker also uh, was such a good, good series because, you know, it brought in all those, it was humor and it was like, it was, you know, it was great fun. It was entertainment, you know, instead of, like you say, uh, bringing all those dark, dark thoughts, you know, to your head yeah. again. Yeah. Too much dark stuff going on. So, so yeah. title out of the dark. Yes. I'm glad you brought up Peacemaker. Um, I see they, they have this opening song that I've heard somewhere before. <laughs> yeah. um, Fun, isn't it? <laughs> Strange. Uh, yeah. So how did how has that helped you? How, how what is wow. the impact of Peacemaker <laughs> and using "Do You Want to Taste It"? In you know, as their opening sequence, how's that affected Wigwam? Well, uh, you know. Of course, only in positive ways, and uh, it, it, it's been a lifesaver for for Wigwam, of course, because, like you said, twenty twenty one wasn't a, a good year. Uh, it was a very hard year, and uh, luckily it became better. But you know, when when the peacemaker broke, you know, it was like so much good things happened. The only only thing, the only bad thing was the, the timing because we were still we were still. Um, the world wasn't functioning the right way still, you know, especially in the entertainment business, because there's been, you know, so, so much shows that has been postponed, postponed, you know, so it was really hard to, to get on those, you know, into those lineups and get those gigs that you were supposed to have with that, that kind of success. But yeah. at the same time, all the promoters and venues, you know, they were kind of broke, especially here in Norway. I, I know they were, uh, a lot of rogue promoters, you know, that you know went bankrupt because of the, the the pandemic, and and it's been a very bad circle, you know, because there have been so many shows have been canceled because of COVID and because of the you know financial stuff that's been going on, and so people have lost lost money, you know, paid paid for tickets for shows that never never happened and uh, so people have been more skeptical to to purchase tickets you know uh, uh, in advance and you know that means the promoters are uh, str struggling even more and you know it's a bad circle I mean yeah. I hope I hope this thing will stop soon that people will uh, that the shows will happen happen and that people will actually uh you know s s start believing that the shows will actually take place hopefully uh, i'm i'm starting yeah. to see some um some optimism here in the states about that you yeah, know cool. but i've been to shows i went to um judas priest's anniversary okay. show and the the place was only half filled Wow, you know, so, um, but it's it's starting to get better. You know, at least it's half filled 
it's it could have been more people, but it could have been less as well. Yeah. So, and the at least people, the people that attend the shows, they, they feel safe again. It's not like <laughs> when we did those those shows for a hundred persons, it was like they were like, oh, do I dare stepping into this uh, <laughs> venue? You know, can yeah. I get COVID? Can I get killed? I mean, now we're, we're so much safer. But then again, you know, with, with, with uh, the economic going downhill, you know, because of the war and everything, people people really, really think twice before they spend money on themselves, uh, like purchasing uh, tickets for, for a show, you know, they're, they're really, they're really, uh, they need need to be convinced, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. But you're... But we'll get I, there, we'll get there. Yeah, and I, I think they'll be convinced for a wigwam show so you're going on tour in norway next week you said no it's two weeks from now two we're starting weeks? you know yeah we're, we're mostly doing you know thursdays to fridays and saturdays we don't do you know in norway nobody will attend on a monday or tuesday maybe in the bigger cities but we'll mostly doing you know those th three in a row and you know but, but in the u.s we'll do it every day you know, more or less all right and then are you going out into you know, Europe, greater Europe and Asia after that? Uh, first, we are, are going back to Norway. We will end that leg uh, with the Monsters of Rock cruise, and then we'll go back and we'll do some festivals and we'll do a cruise here in Norway as well. And, uh, of course, then we're, we're, we don't know what, what, what we're going to make out of, uh, you know, make of uh, the fall yet. But I really hope there will be a European tour. And, and obviously, you know, we, we've been... I know that we're planning on getting back to the U.S. as soon as possible. You know, if if it works out, if if uh, the U.S. Uh, the tour will be a, is a success, then of course, then we are going to try to be able to get back as soon as possible. You know, yeah. because then we we need to build. It's a total totally new market for us. We never played in the U.S. before, so new ground, and you know, it's a big country, and uh, uh, and. For the U.S., uh, you know, rockers were were a new new act, kind of, you know. So they need to, we need to, we need to uh, convince the Americans that we are worth their, the the price of the tickets. <laughs> well, we'll do that. <laughs> there's a big appetite here in the states for your kind of music, and I love that you're evolving your kind of music. It's not strictly you know, the glam metal anymore. It's, it's a big chunk of glam, but you're also, you know, like we were talking about with Nevermore and, um, you know, Sailor in the, and the, what was it? Sailor in the Desert Sand, right? The Desert Sun, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going heavier, you're experimenting. I think American audiences are going to respond to that, but they also love, you know, Kilimanjaro, Do You Want to Taste It? You know, the, the, the big glam singles. Um, yeah, that's cool. So I think you're you're really going to do well when you get over here. I think you're going to love the audiences. Crossing my fingers <laughs> and my toes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I won't take up too much more of your time. Uh, Aga Stan Nilsson, Glam of Wigwam, thank you so much for being on the Hard, Heavy, and Hair Show. It's been a very nice conversation. Thank you for having me. And uh, have a great weekend. And uh, see you there in, in the... Um, Hopefully at the NAMM show and and we'll have a, a smoky whiskey together. That would be nice. All yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Stay safe. Remember, to hear the music discussed in this interview, stream the on-demand Hard Heavy and Hair show at pariahrocks.com. That's P-A-R-I-A-H-R-O-C-K-S dot com. Also hit pariahrocks.com to stream or listen on a radio station near you. The regular two-hour Hard Heavy and Hair show with me, Pariah Burke. Hard Heavy and Hair is your weekly dose of hard rock, heavy metal, and hair bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 20 teens, and today, including the latest new releases, your old favorites, and deep cuts and rare hair, along with rock news and trivia.